So in this video, we're going to be looking at uh, three scatter graphs and trying to determine um, the, what the value of R is likely to be. What is the value of the product moment correlation coefficient likely to be in each of these three cases? Okay, so we're going to look at this one to start off with. Now, in a lot of cases, the easiest way to see these kind of things is to draw a uh, dotted line down the middle and across. So you split it into four quadrants, and then you can kind of easily see that they are the data is kind of spread over the four quadrants fairly evenly. And so, because of that, you'd be thinking, well, that would mean that I would be expecting a value of R that is roughly zero, okay? So, practically no correlation whatsoever. Now, in the second example, if we did that kind of same trick, then you're kind of seeing more in the bottom left and top right hand corners of the quadrants. So you'll be expecting negative correlation in there. So it's going to be a negative value. Um, we'd probably be, be looking at something like R is probably minus um, 0.7, maybe 0.6, okay? But a negative correlation, we're not meant to be um, uh, calculating it exactly, that's not our job here, is to try and identify, do we know what these values of R mean? This last one uh, usually catches a lot of people out um, if it's thrown at you, because it looks like two sets, independent sets of data, um, it might be two groups, okay, of things, but they look like they're both in a positive direction. But if we do our lines, you can see that the data is usually in the top left and the bottom right. So actually you can kind of see that the data is going in that direction. And so if we did the product moment correlation coefficient, it might not be suitable, but the kind of number that we would be getting would probably be quite similar to that one. Okay, so that's kind of like the things to look out for. This uh, cross mechanism can really help with this.